um, as introduced, I'm one of the accountants uh, who is specializing in Amazon and e-commerce side of things. Um, I've been asked to put up a topic that is helpful for um, uh, people who are selling on Amazon and I think cost of goods sold is one of the important ones. Now, um, as you know, we, we are all discussing on how to be more efficient and effective in our whole business of Amazon and how to sell this uh, more properly. You're finding good uh, producers and, you know, not good country where you can get all these resources from. Um, all of this can side in terms of how profitable it is for you at the end of the day. Um, and as we all have limited resources, we want to make sure that those limited resources are used for the best uh, outcomes. Um, so that's where this concept of cost of goods sold comes in. Um, so it is an accounting concept that helps um, you and your business to identify what your actual product you're selling will be costing you in an essence and how much can you get out of it in, in the whole end profit circle of it. You know, you do your market research, you do your other um, resourcing on finding out the best product out there, but cost of goods sold is something that will be generating you the uh, end results uh, strategy that you should be adopting for your Amazon products. Um, so if you can go next slide, please. Okay, so the overview would be the, so this is a short uh, speak, so I'll tell you about what cost of goods sold actually is, um, why is it important for Amazon sellers, and what does, how does it actually reflect on your uh, financial statements? And lastly, I'll just touch a little bit on uh, how cost of goods sold can also tell you how much volume do you need to sell to actually survive on Amazon and make sure that uh, you make profit out of this whole process um, and not lose out. And then I'll do a quick conclusion. Um, next, please. Okay, so cost of goods sold itself um, is any uh, cost that is directly linked to your product. Um, for Amazon, um, it's uh, I've since uh, written some examples here. Anything that is raw material. So if you're producing the item yourself, and then any any raw material that you're buying is your cost of goods sold. Uh, but mainly we are purchasing the items here from you know different countries. So that's mainly supply payment. Um, any shipment cost that comes through uh, that will again include it warehouse rent, if you're using FBA, then obviously all the FBA charges and cost will become your cost of goods sales. And finally, the listing and Amazon charges. Now, again, this is a choice that you make in the beginning of your business and a product line that what are the costs that you would want to add into cost of sales? Mainly, these are the costs that um, increases as your number of product increases. So for example, if you're ordering 1000 products, um, your cost of goods sale will, for these items would be um, for the thousand products. Um, and if you are going 1500, 500 extra, the prices of all of these items will increase as well. So if you're, for example, have an accounting package that is based on number of transactions or number of products you have, then you can also add that to your cost of sales. Um, the only purpose for this is to make sure that you know what your products is actually costing you. Um, now, the why we use it and the cost of goods sales minus the actual sales revenue gives you a gross profit. And all of the strategy in business world is done based on gross profit. Uh, major companies use this for combination basis and use this for percentage basis on margin and see how well you're doing in a world business in terms of your gross profits. Uh, can you go next slide, please? So for Amazon, uh, how will it help you? It will help you to track your base cost uh, and determine your selling price. So uh, it is important to know what your selling price should be. So there are two ways to do it. You either do it full technically with accounting background of it, or you just estimate what it should. So if you're buying it for 20 pounds and you're selling it for 40 pounds, it seems like a good margin, fine. But if you do it systematically, that actually tells you how much you can stretch and what is the lowest point you can go to before making any losses. So that's what it tells you um, uh, and it helps you determine the profitability of each of your SKUs and each products that you have uh, on your listing. If there is a fluctuation, so for example, uh, first month you sold 10,000 products, next month you sold 12,000 products, but your profit is less than previous month, uh, although you're selling more, uh, cost of goods sold is uh, the point where you go and check and that will tell you why you made a loss instead of even selling more, but you still made a loss. That's what cost of goods sold will help you with. Um, this also helps you compare all of the products that you have in your line and also with other Amazon sellers as well. So um, with the gross profit margin that comes out of gross, uh, cost of goods sold, 
you can actually see the percentage of your product and other products and see how you compare with them in terms of profitability. Um, so as I said, um, popularity and all of the bits uh, are market strategy and research sort of things, but actual financially, how good your product is doing is what Cost of the Soul is about. And again, as I said, lastly, I'll talk about the volume that is needed for you and your business to survive. Next. Now, um, I prepared a little sheet for you. So this is a very basic uh, PNL. Obviously, your PNL would look like a more, more advanced and uh, have a lot of more figures. But again, uh, just to give you an idea. So if you look at this uh, profit and loss for an Amazon seller X, um, he has three months here, January, February, and March 20, right? Uh, he sold uh, in January 20,000, 28,000, and 18,000. And the cost of goods sold was supply, payment, shipment, inventory, and Amazon fees. Now, for the first month on 20,000, his total cost, all of them together, were 10,000 pounds. Um, that shows that his profit margin on gross profit was 50%. Right? Now, this 50% means that uh, anything that he's selling on Amazon, he's getting a gross profit of 50%, which is obviously, you know, it's quite basic, it's understandable. But next month, when he sold 28,000, um, his gross profit uh, was 58%. And that's because if you look at the inventory line, uh, the storage cost for inventory was 500 when he was selling 20, but the inventory cost when he was selling 28 was same 500 pounds. Um, that shows that some of the cost will stay the same uh, and some of the cost will increase. And that's where this gross profit margin comes in and helps you to determine what is working for you and what you should keep on. Um, same for Amazon fees and stuff. Um, it worked out in a way that the more he was selling, the less it was charging him. And for that reason, uh, overall, it, it, were, it increased to 58%. But if you look at the March 20 figures, we can see that although the figures stayed the same and you know, supply cost is the same proportion to how um, much, if you bought 10,000 items, it would have costed you the same for um, buying 7,200 items. But because the inventory uh, storage fees is equal to the one for higher storage, your gross profit margin is 49%. Now what that sh shows you is that on that specific month, your inventory storage costs were a lot uh, higher than it should be for that size of uh, revenue. So this example uh, is just to show you that if you have seasonal items, let's say um, for first six months, you know that your product will do really good. You will keep that in a specific uh, inventory management system. But if you know that the next six months, um, you won't have that many sales because it's a season item. Uh, you know you need to make a different strategy and different system for your inventory. Again, I'm just using inventory as an example, but this could be used for any other things, freight charges, uh, you know, shipment cost, um, anything that can, you can use. You have deals, contracts with your uh, clients, so you can pinpoint where these fluctuations coming from and change those accordingly. Uh, next slide, please. Now, um, yeah, so as I discussed, um, other things that Cost of Goods Sold can help you with is uh, not every sale that you make on Amazon is, uh, will generate you good profit, but Cost of Goods Sold will draw a line for you. Uh, and that, uh, that line tells you that, for example, if you have some inventory stock sitting on your um, uh, warehouse, you want to get rid of it, Cost of Goods Sold will tell you where to, how low can you go uh, before making any losses. And you, offer, you can offer discounts, but only at this point. And if you make any more dis, uh, discounts, you will start making losses. And the way that normally works is that cost of goods sold plus 10% for admin cost. And that's the uh, tipping point. Anything below than that goes there. But what it also tells us, if your admin cost is more than 10%, then you need to have a look at your admin cost and see why is it that much. It should not be more than 10%. Again, that also depends on industry specific, but from my experience for Amazon sellers, especially the small sellers, um, it's 10% after your cost of goods sold. So um, that's where it will help you. Um, in terms of selling prices, again, as I said, uh, cost of goods sales plus 10%, and then every product on Amazon has a specific average on margin. So you can use that. So let's say another 30% and sell your product on that basis. And once you know uh, what exact cost you have, then you can start finding better ways to reduce your cost as well. Next slide, please. Okay, so this is the part where um, I've shown a little bit on how you compare each product on cost of goods sales. Um, so we've got three products here, A, B, C. Um, again, um, 
these are the payments and supply shipping inventory and Amazon charges. Um, and these are the sales that's happening. So if you look at it, the product you only sold 5,000 pounds worth. Um, and based on all of these expenses, it's only generating 15% of profit for you. So this is the way that you can identify how profitable this product is for you. Um, where the product B, you sold 35,000 of it, although you're paying a lot for supply costs, it is giving you 23% worth of profit. Um, but the most profitable one is the product C. And as you can see that, uh, although you're selling a lot less of it, but because of the profit margin shows you that it's 45% more profitable for you. So it will generate you more money than product B itself. Um, obviously it also depends how much you sell of it, but your most profitable product is product C. And maybe this is the indication that you need to push this product more and maybe you need to uh, spend less resources on your product A. Um, again, the, another thing to pick from this whole chart is your inventory storage and shipping costs, as you can see. Um, for all of your products, you pay 2,700 pounds. Um, in accounting, we proportion it according to the sales price um, because you cannot pinpoint each product for, per se, so you do it this way. But that also gives you a specific um, uh, cost of goods sold. So this, uh, this can be really used uh, if you have um, 40 products on Amazon and some of them are redundant, some of them are still sitting in stock. Um, this is a way to find out which is the one that you need more, more focus on. Next, please. Okay, how does it show in your profit and loss? So let's say you, you have your accountant who does it for you. Um, what they will do is on a monthly basis send you your balance sheet and profit and loss account. On balance sheet, there will be a column on asset side saying inventory. And that just shows that at the end of the month, this is how much worth of inventory sitting on your books. Where the profit and loss will show you how much of it has been rolled out and you bought more and give you a specific figure on your profit on that cost. Um, this, one thing that I've seen is a lot of Amazon sellers are doing is that they tend to record any purchases they make on the month they bought it. Um, so if you go to the next screen, what they tend to do is, for example, if any Amazon seller um, they, on, on the first month, this is the first time they're starting and, and they bought 30,200 pounds worth of a stock from, let's say, India. What they will do is they, they will record it as all of it as expense and that this is how much I spend and this is my expense. And on, on that month, they only had 5,000 pounds worth of sales. What that will show is uh, that they had nearly 26,250,000 pounds worth of loss, which is you know, a massive loss of 525,000, uh, 525%. Uh, and on the next month, when you sell more of these products, let's say 35 and 12 percent, you don't have any costs of uh, go sold because uh, you recorded it all in the first month and all the, the second both months, you're recording 86% and 87% worth of profit. Now, um, some of my own clients, when they come to me, they were doing the same thing. So that's why I thought I would mention it here. Whenever you are getting stock from anywhere, your initial first stock or, you know, your ongoing stock, you need to um, uh, link it to your assets rather than your profit and loss. And the way it works out is that it sits in your books, but it does not come on your um, profit and loss accounts. As you start selling, we take that out of your uh, balance sheet and we uh, plug it up here. So 5,000, uh, in reality, it should look like that 5,000 worth of sale would have only been 3,000 worth of your cost. And that's how it should continue on until that uh, stock is completely gone. Um, so this is something that we do in the back end accounting sort of things, but uh, it has to be really carefully dealt with. Otherwise, you would never be able to tell you how much your actual profit is and how much you're performing on month by month basis you will only be able to see um, profit, which is not a true picture of what you're doing on a monthly basis. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so lastly, volume that you need to know. Um, so uh, I have a small scenario here that, for example, you have a product which is for 15 pounds and the cost of goods sold is 10 pounds, which includes everything. If you're selling 100 of it, um, but your other cost of goods uh, cost is 800 pound that includes your accounting fees, where, um, accounting fees, your um, staff salary, and for, if you pay yourself as well. So that's 800 pounds throughout. That doesn't change because you know, your accounting fees wouldn't change uh, and your other fees wouldn't change. That's a fixed rate that you pay on a monthly basis. If you made 100, pounds, 100 uh, uh, sales, your sales will be 1500, your cost of goods will be 1000. Gross margin is 500 pounds, that's your uh, gross profit. All of the costs is 800, that's a fixed 
uh, cost, you will have a net loss of 300 uh, uh, pounds. But if you do the same of 200 uh, transactions, um, your net will stay 800, uh, but your net profit will become 200 pounds because you're only saving one pounds uh, per item. In this scenario, uh, where you're selling 300 uh, items, uh, you will have a net profit of 700 pounds. This is directly linked to cost of goods sold and your fixed cost. So if you know what your cost of goods sold are, you know how much you need to sell to make a good profit because your other costs will always stay consistent no matter what uh, sales ratio you have. Um, so this is one of the good uh, strategy planning stage when you're initially setting up your business uh, that you need to make sure you plan it and how much you need to sell of this to ensure that you get this much profit. Um, and if you think you can't sell this much uh, and it's a big difference, then probably not get into it and you know strategy and do something else. Um, next slide, please. So to summarize all of this, um, the people who use cost of goods sales and people who don't use co cost of goods sales, you base your pricing on analysis that you do and it tells you how much space you have for promotions. Where if you don't use this and you're just estimating, um, you, would, you would never know that the promotion you're doing, uh, like let's say 30% off this month, would that actually end up in loss for you? Um, it tells you the minimum sales volume that you needed to have on a monthly basis. Um, and this will tell you exactly how much you need to sell. Where on, without cost of sale, this it's just a simple idea that you say, let's sell as many as we can. Um, it helps you with the sales strategies. Again, um, you know exactly what you need to sell. Where without it, you're just selling anything that you can and make as much money as you can. And lastly, performance report, reporting. Um, it tells you on a monthly basis how your business is exactly doing on financially and what are you getting out of it. Where without cost of goods sale, you can never tell financially how good you were doing. Yes, you can know your profit, but you don't know what you should do to increase it and what should you do to decrease your cost of goods sales. Um. Uh, all right, brilliant. Uh, thanks, uh, thanks so much, uh, Taimo. <laughs> Taimo, sorry, yeah, I, I keep pronouncing your name wrong. <laughs> so, um, well, that was helpful. Very wonderful, and, and I also one one important tip that you have given us is uh, this one. Right, that's the biggest takeaway for me from this meeting today. Uh, I mean, apart from everything else. <laughs> Uh, this one is very important. I have been doing the uh, bookkeeping for, for my own business and, and just now I have moved it to uh, a software. Um, but this is what I have been doing. I have been accounting uh, the supplier payments as expenses in my books and one month there will be a huge loss, a huge dip in the profits and then the yeah. next month there's a huge, <laughs> huge spike in the profits. Uh, I, th I think it's a very important tip. Uh, uh, that I have to back to my accountant and speak with him. <laughs> okay. Definitely, definitely. That is very um, important, definitely. Brilliant, brilliant. Also, um, there have been a couple of questions, I believe. Um, yes, yeah, so there have been a couple of... Uh, wait, I'm going to admit one person in. Somebody who is joining now, that's interesting. All right, uh, I'm going to, uh, can, can you mute yourself, uh, Taimo? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, can accountants provide product level advice on profit and loss? Yes, uh, definitely. So ourself um, on Awesome, um, as we specialize on this side, we provide our Amazon clients uh, on per SKU. And obviously we get all of the information from your um, Amazon as a second user and we provide profit and loss for each um, product line that you have. And obviously that can sometimes be, uh, you know, massive. Sometimes you can have more than hundred uh, items there. So, but we still have AI and software at the back end that helps us to do that. So to answer your question, yes, uh, accountants can do that. Okay, okay. Uh, and do you think uh, the official panel softwares for Amazon, uh, there are many of them available uh, these days. Yeah. Uh, do you think they will help in understanding the margins clearly? Um, again, um, cost of goods sold itself is uh, an accounting niche and accounting expertise um, area. So um, what accountants normally do is sit down and look at your actual products and product line on site and tell you this could be your cost of goods sold and this could be your normal process. Anyone can do cost of goods sold, to be honest, you know, you just sit down and look at your cost and uh, do a total and say this is what it is. But the difficult part is the variable cost and the fixed cost. 
and that's where the accountant comes in and do that. So if you're a really small business and let's say you have uh, one item uh, in your product, then most probably the margin, uh, you know, off the shelf would be able to help you, but you still need to know, you still need to have the basic understanding to, you know, uh, understand the margins yourself, but anything which is slightly more uh, complex, always need an accountant at the back end. All right. All right. Thank you. Thanks for explaining. Uh, that's pretty much it. Thank you, Taimur. Uh, uh, we, I, have, I have seen uh, you working on this for a couple of days, and that's a major effort. Uh, thanks so much for taking that effort and sharing your knowledge with us. Um, I'm, sure, I'm sure at least one person from this group will be interested in uh, speaking with you. <clears throat> I appreciate it. Thank you for having me with you guys. I really appreciate the um, applause. Thank you.